morning again hopefully this works this time I'm sorry about that so let's begin again as always please practice according to your condition and please feel free to do the variations if you are comfortable with them otherwise modify as you need to in order to make it um, suitable for you so let's begin Start by sitting calm, straight, close the eyes, bring the attention inward. Nothing to do, nothing to seek. Everything we need is already within. Let's begin with the sound of OM three times to attract divine attention. Imagine becoming one with all beings. everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice through our senses may we acquire a strong desire for liberation from pain and suffering may we cherish no ill feelings against each other only peace love joy and compassion om shanti 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 let's do the mantra for purification to purify the space the grounds and all the psychic channels within if you know it, you can chant along with me. If not, you can always imagine you're singing it through the voice of the Guru and you derive all those benefits of purification as though you're chanting it perfectly. So just do your best and just stay with that intention. Do it three times. Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pandrikaksham Sa Ba Ya Bihantra Ha Schi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pandrikaksham Sa Ba Ya Bihantra Ha Schi 
Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Va Sa Va Vashtain Gato Pi Va Yaha Smarit Pandrik Aksham Sa Baya Bhyantra Ha Sjihi Now let's do the main breathing, alternate nostril breathing with breath retention. So we'll do a rhythm of 4, 16, 8, the, for, for the ratio of 1, 4, 2. So we're going to start off with the active nostril. Breathe in through the active nostril for four counts. Hold the breath for 16. And we're going to just, through the breath retention, apply the throat in a root lock. To apply the throat lock, you bring the chest up high as you inhale, so that when you uh, hold the breath, you can bring your chin down onto your chest. The tongue comes to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth to seal off that lock. For the root lock, contract the root muscles, pull them up towards the navel. Imagine you're lifting the whole pelvic floor up. So you feel tension there. Okay, so then the attention is also at the space between the eyebrows. We hold the breath for a count to 16. Exhale through the less active side. Inhale back to the less active side immediately. Hold the breath again. Apply the throat in a root lock. Third eye attention. Exhale out through the active side. Let's find the active side first. Left hand and yana mudra first. Second finger and thumb connected. Other three fingers extended on the left knee. Right hand, second, third fingers fold down. This is Vishnu mudra. Turn the palm towards you. This becomes a mudra that we use for pranayama. The right thumb for the right ring, uh, right nostril. The right ring finger for the left nostril. Only use those two fingers. Only use the right hand. So block off the right side first. Inhale through the left a few times. Do the same with the other side. Block off the left, the right, left side with the right ring finger. Breathe in and out through the right. Whichever side feels more open is your active side. If they feel exactly the same, default to the left side for the active. <laughs> my right side is my active side, so I will demonstrate with my right side as the active side. So sit up tall and straight. Left hand, Ganyana Mudra. Empty out the lungs completely. Close off the less active side. Inhale through the active. Two, three. Four. Hold the breath, chin on the chest, third eye attention. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Throw lock, root lock. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Exit out through the less active side, evenly and steadily, not like a big explosion out of your body. Four, five, six. Completely empty by the eight count. Eight. Inhale through the uh, less active side, lift the chest, hold the breath again, chin on the chest, two, three, four, all your chest, at the space between the eyebrows, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, exhale out through the active side, release the locks, four, five, six, Inhale through the active side. Three, inflate the lungs, hold the breath. Third eye attention, everything stops. All the attention and space in the eyebrows. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Exhale out through the less active side. Two, three, four. Release your breath steadily and evenly again. Seven. Eight. Inhale through the last active side. Three, four. Gentle the chest. Keep the back straight. Make sure you don't hunch the back. Everything stops. All the mind fluctuations, the body movement, and the emotions. So they're frozen. 13, 14, 15, 16. Exhale out through the active side. Two, three. Inhale through the active for four. Hold the breath. Even though there's tension in your root and your throat, keep your mind calm, observing as though you're the witness. Fifteen, sixteen. Exhale out through the less active side for eight. Keep this. Count even. 
Inhale through the less active side. Three, four, hold for 60. Exhale out through the active side. Continue. I think that was the less active, sorry. Inhale through the less active. Hold the breath, third eye attention. Exhale out through the active. One more cycle, inhale. Hold the breath. These are just techniques to get you interested in the practice of pranayama, which is a gateway to the higher realms of the practice. Quiet the mind and discipline the mind through this practice. Breathe out through the less active side. Inhale through the less active. Hold the breath. Hold the attention at the space between your eyebrows. Exhale out through the active side. Release the right hand. Sit very tall and still. Just take a moment to just notice any effects, any changes in the state of the mind, the body, any emotions. Just be like the witness, doing the self-study without any judgment, any concern as to what you observe. Throughout the practice, continue to stay in this meditative state, this self-study state. Gaze is inward, focusing on God, who's at the center of the heart, center of the chest and the right side of the physical heart and the spiritual heart. Keep your attention there. I imagine God residing in all forms and beings, which we will now celebrate. All the forms. Now let's come to standing. Begin the practice. We're going to start off with charging breathing. Bring the feet about 10 inches apart. Bring the arms above the head. We inhale, pull the earth's energy right up through the fingertips, uh, right up from the soles of feet, right up to the fingertips. Three, four, five, six. Feel the energy rising. Eight. Holding on all of the fingertips. Hold the breath. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale all the way back down. Two. Keep your attention on the breath and the energy. Six, seven, eight. Inhale, pull the air, send you right up again, up through the body. Use your attention to attract it all there to the fingertips. Five, six, seven, eight. Holding all the fingertips, hold the breath again. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale all the way back down. Feel the air's energy just charging right down throughout the body. Six, seven, eight. Last time, pull the earth's energy right up through the body to the fingertips. Feel it rising. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Holding at the fingertips, hold the breath. Four, five, six. Exhale all the way back down. Feel fully charged. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Arms down now. Let's continue with the exercise to prepare the body for the practice. We'll start to swing from side to side. Have the arms to stop the body. Any which way is under heavy ropes. Good, and then release. Bring the hands on the hips. <clears throat> and then 
and start to circle the head. Feel as though the head which is rolling all the way around its pivot point, on top of the neck. Feel as though the head was very, very heavy. And then switch the direction of rotation. Try to bring the ears right to the shoulders and chin on the chest, back head to the top of the back. And then release here. So the right arm, start to swing it forward four times. Reverse, feels like you're about to scroll the ball. And reverse again, forward. And then back the other way. And then the other arm, left arm, swings forward. And then back. Careful of your shoulder, of course. If you have any injuries, you can always support with your right hand and then forward again and back and release. Bring your arms up over the head, take hold the opposite elbows, bend to your left, go to the right, left again, and then right, and then back forward, back, push your chest up, and forward, and then come up right again, little circles of the head, shoulders, and neck, chase some little circles over the head, and then getting bigger, adding the chest and the upper back into the movement, and now, if you feel comfortable, the whole torso circles. Chasing large circles in front of the body. And coming right back up and then circle in the other direction. Starting small first. Head, shoulders, and neck. Hips stay more or less still. And then the upper back and the chest come into the movement, making the circles a little bit bigger. And then the whole body. Press your arms into the back of the head, push the head into the back of the arms as well. And come all the way up. Release the arms, shake out the wrists. Move the fingers very, very, very rapidly. And then up and down, fly the hands like the wing, fingers like the wings of a hummingbird. So fast you can't even see them move, they're like a blur. Bring the arms out to the side and swing them right way back and forth. So if you need to, it's always nice to hold on to something so we can get a little bit more deeper into the movement. Lean forward, try to bring the knee to the shoulder. And then make it so you're trying to bring the foot right to the head behind you. And then the other leg. expectations and get attached to the results this just brings about disappointment sometimes and uh, discouragement so just try instead to focus on delivering all the benefits to all beings everywhere making this your divine duty to all Surya Namaskar raise your arms up over the head press the hips forward reach the arms back come forward down into Uttanasana bend your knees if you need to bring your hands on the ground Chest on the thighs, the right foot back, sink down to the seat, lower down the knee, come into high plank, bring the knees down, the seat all the way back behind the heels, glide between the arms, come forward into your cobra, head back, shoulders open, come all the way back, the seat behind the heels again, come forward again, push the elbows up to the side, hold your arms, come forward into your cobra, one more time, all the way back, 
blood between the arms. Tug at the floor with your arms. Repel yourself forward with more ease and power. Roll over your toes. Adho Mukha Savanasana. Lift the seat up and back. Allow the head to melt down between your arms. Good. So just stay here for a moment. Just bounce to the chest a little bit. Try to sink your shoulders. If you have the ability, you can try to get the top of the head to the ground. If you're more flexible, maybe the forehead, the nose, maybe even the chin. Just take it easy the first time. However, just do according to your condition. Then look between the hands, bring the right foot forward, sink down to the seat, lower the hip, head up. Come into high plank, chest on the thighs, head down. Come right to standing, reach up and back. Extend the torso out of the hips, back down and hands to the heart. Reach the arms up again, reach up and back. Come forward and down into Uttanasana, fold the body in half. Left foot back, sink down to the seat again into the high plank, lower down the knees, the feet all the way back, glide between the arms, pull the shoulders back, arch the back coming up, make the body look, the spine look like a C, letter C, all the way back, come forward again, brush your nose to the ground, think of the snake creep into the grass, try to imitate the movement, all the way back, seat back behind heels, come forward again, pull forward, Hips between the hands, raise the chest, open up the heart in every sense. Roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog. Again, take a few moments here to just melt. Imitate a dog who's stretching its back. Copy the form mentally, physically, and emotionally. Try to be like the dog who's loyal to its master. It's playful. But now from here, look at the hands. Left foot forward. If it's too much, if it's too difficult, you can lower the knee down. If the foot doesn't make it all the way, just use your left hand to assist the foot forward. Then drop down to the seat. The feet come together, chest on the thighs, head down again. Come right up to stand, reach up and back, hips forward. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms up over the head, reach up and back. Come forward and down into Uttanasana. Right foot back, sink down through the seat. Come into high plank. Lower down, Ashtanga Namaskara. Knees, chest, forehead down. Scoop right through into the cobra. Back into downward facing dog. Watch the body moving in your mind. Right foot forward. Try to see it moving with grace and ease. And then this will perhaps realize in your movements. If you just keep watching the image in your mind, reach up and back. Remember, it is a divine offering to God, so do the best you can. Hands back to the heart. Only to swing your arms up again, hips forward. Go down, Uttanasana. Gesture of deep humility as your head comes down, the eyes downcast. Left foot back into its uh, lower the seat. Come back into high plank. Ashtanga Namaskara, knees, chest, forehead down. Right through into the cobra, telescope the neck out of the shoulders, the hips, the, the trunk out of the body, the hips, back into downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward to the hands. Try to place it quietly, no big loud noises, nothing to jar the attention of the witness, to distract the witness, to agitate the witness. Reach up and back, hips forward, hands back to the heart. Bring your arms up again. Lower down, hands down to the ground, chest on its thighs, going a little bit deeper this time. Telescope your chest forward, join hands behind the back and push the body into your legs, send the head closer to the feet. If you can't, if you can, if you can try to keep your thighs with your chest, you can keep pushing your legs back. If your legs don't straighten without detaching your body to, uh, from the legs, just keep your knees bent. And then release the hands, right foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Raise your arms up over the head. Pull the shoulders back, bring your arms back behind the ears, crescent moon shape, bring your arms back. Fingers form a point with your index fingers. Come right back down, bring your hands back down. Now from here, if you can, swing your left leg all the way up and back. If you can't, just stay in plank, feet together. Come forward into your high plank. Lower down, glue the elbows to the sides of the body, Come down first to your chest. Again, if it's too much, you lower the knee down. 
at the same time as the chest is coming down. The feet come together, come all the way up into Cobra. Roll over your toes, back into Downward Facing Dog. All the movements done smoothly. Right foot up and back, tap into consciousness of the movements. Right foot forward, lower the seat, inhale, come up. Crescent Moon, Kapiyasana. So in the consciousness of this pose, you're offering up, surrendering, and then coming back down, offering, of course, and bring the left foot in to meet the right. Chest on the thighs, join the belly to your thighs, join the hands behind the back, pull down into Uttanasana. Try to have the hands come below, beyond the head, close to the ground. Lift up the seat a little bit more, feel a stretch in the backs of the legs. And then release the hands back down on the back. Swing them all the way up and back over your head. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms up over the head again. Hips forward, arch back. Create space. Float your true nature, which is actually formless, immutable, infinite. The hands down on the ground. Bend your knees. Land your belly on your thighs. Join your hands behind the back. Telescope the chest forward and fold down a little bit more. You're flexible, your legs straighten, your forehead to your shins. And then release the hands, left foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Pull the arms up, pull the body further by the hips, imagine your arms starting away to hit the joints. Reach back, arch the back, and then come back down. Hands to the ground, push into your hands, and swing the right leg all the way up and back again, again, or come into plank position. Come forward into your high plank. Now from here, again, elbows close, right against the body to control the sense, give you strength to come down smoothly and into your cobra. Back into Adho Nasana. Lift the seat up and back. Bring the left leg up and back. Three-legged dog. And step the foot between the hands softly, landing it. No big jarring noises again. Lower the knees, sit down to the seat. Raise your arms up over the head, arch back as you see fit. Pull the body by the hips. And then bring the hands back down. Slide the right foot into the left. Chest again on the thighs, join the hands and deep dive down, forehead to the shins. Hands come over the head. And then release. Sweep the arms back over the head. Reach up and back. Bring the hands back to the heart. Another variation now. Raise your arms up, hips forward, go back. Even though you've done these movements many, many times, just try to see it as a new experience every time. Head and chest lift, press with your hands, hop or walk back into Chaturanga or on your belly if you like. Now you can either stay cobra or lift your hips and knees up off the ground, coming into upward facing dog. To pull the thighs and knees away from the ground if you're doing that pose, nose up, make like a dog howling the moon, like howling at the moon. Remember, try to see God in all the forms, all the divine qualities in every being in their own unique way. Roll over your toes, downward facing dog. Sink down to the seat. Uh, not to the seat, sink down to the heart. Top of the head coming towards the ground or maybe on the ground. Lift up the heels, bend the knees, look between your hands. Bring your feet forward, hopping or walking. Pull the body down onto your legs, chest on the thighs, head down. Right up to standing, reach up and back, hips forward. Bring the hands back to the heart. Roll up again, pull the arms back, and then down. Bow to the legs as though in humbleness. Inhale, head to chest lift, press into your hands, bend your elbows as you come back. If you're floating back, so you land softly. Into upward facing dog or cobra. Roll right into downward facing dog from here. Round your back and then sink your heart. Come forward again. Roll over your toes. Round your back. Uncoiling. Arch your back. And back the other way. Tuck your chin in. And then back into downward facing dog. One more time. Come forward. Round your back. Tuck the tailbone. Come all the way forward and up. And back the other way. Round the back and sink the heart. Good, and then from here, lift the heels, bend the knees, lift the hands. Bring your feet forward, hopping or walking. Pull the body down, eyes downcast. Let, let, again, to reflect humility. Then coming up, 
Open yourself up to divine grace. Hips forward, arch back as you see fit. Bring your hands back to the heart. Take pause here for a moment from the heart. Inhale up to the space between the eyebrows. Exhale back down to the heart. Remain established in love towards all beings everywhere. Celebrate their forms now. Celebrate the divinity in each and every body and being. And release. So let's come into some standing poses now. Starting off with ballet pose, standing with your left foot firmly planted. Take hold of the right heel. And then see if you can raise your leg and arm up at the same time. So you want to have the toes and the foot on this and the fingers on the same line, so it might look more like a T. Try to get your legs straight. If you're more flexible, pull the foot up close to the shoulder. Lean a little bit to your left so you can keep the fingers and the toes on the same line, the same height. Now from here, let go of the foot. Come down slowly, engage the legs so that it doesn't come flying down. Let's try to come right into top leaf tree. Other option, just stand with your hand, but just come into balancing T pose, straight back from the head to the toes like you're lying on a table. If you feel you can go further, you want to bring your head down a little bit closer, uh, down a little bit further so it's about the height of the knee and then bring your right leg up, arch the back, pull the hands over your head. You can also separate your hands if it's too much to hold, um, to keep your hands together. Open up your palms. And then press into your left foot, and come back. So let's try the other, on the other foot now. Plant down to the right foot. And from here, Raise your left foot up, bring your knee up, take hold the inside of the heel, the thumb behind the heel. And then come up again at the height that's appropriate to you. If it's too much, you, can't, uh, you can also hold your knee and hold underneath the leg and see what you can do. Just try your best. And even if you did it perfectly yesterday or the day before and it's not coming today, it's just the gunas at work those forces of the universe just propelling you to different states. Dance with it all. Be unconcerned. Be magnificent like the dancer. Chest open. Good. And then from here, again, engage the leg muscles so the leg comes down slowly. And from here, I'll do this way so you can see. You can either just come straight into balance and T, so your body and your the, the leg and the head are on the same line roughly, or go down a little bit further with your head. Belly comes towards the thigh, left leg comes up, your arms come up over your shoulders. Get the fall towards your right toes a little bit. And then break the pose, coming back up. Good. All right, so we'll do one more. Um, okay, so we're going to bring left foot forward, reach down to your left hand, then standing leg, bring the right leg up, Abhijandrasana, right arm comes up. If it's too much, you can stay on your knee. Okay, you can do it from here if you like. If you're having trouble reaching your knee, or you can take a block if you have a block. More advanced, bend the knee, take hold of the foot. Push the foot away from the head, the knee pointing up. Transi transitioning into another pose now, looking forward, bend the standing leg, hold your breath. Take half breath in first and come up. So you can either stay like this, Start of a dancer. If you can, bring your left arm forward, height to the shoulder, and pull the foot up so your thigh is level to the ground. You can stay here. This is a version of a dancer, or you can do other forms if you like. Lean forward if you know other variations, go ahead. If you're more flexible, you can try to take hold of your shin. Go 
close to the knee and try to get your legs straighter. Great, the pose, come back up. Release. So if you lose your balance, just keep trying. Just step into the pose again. Now the right foot forward, bend the right leg so you can bring your right hand down easily and raise the left leg up. Try to go completely sideways, bring the left arm up. Again, come down onto your knee if you need to. If you have balance, come up a little bit higher. Open up your chest. If you like, take hold of the foot, find the foot. You can do this on your knee as well. Just try to push the foot as far away from your head as possible. Left shoulder goes back. Feels like you're doing a bow pose, stretch the whole front of the body. And see if you can come up. Look forward, hold the left hip in, bend the right leg a little bit, right knee. Take half breath in to come up. So again, you can stay like this, time being, try to find your balance. Or the right arm comes about the height of the shoulder and lift your left leg, left foot up. About the height of the thigh is the level of the ground. You can stay here or you can move into other variations. Hold on to the shin if you like. Picture yourself in the practice you're trying to attain. Just keep practicing, have the faith, have the determination. The practice will blossom. And release, come back up. Okay, so now we're gonna stand in the middle of the mat, facing out the long edge of the mat. Fingertips in line with one another. Jump your feet and your arms out, looking like a star. Turn to your left. If you're facing the wrong way, just turn 180 degrees. Try to get your knee over the toe. Dharma G likes to go a little bit lower to work the hip a little bit. If you swing your right hand down, maybe the fingertips touch the ground. Strong and steady like the warrior. Good. Now from here, bring your hands behind the back. Pull the hands down, lift the chest, bring the head up and back. And then really engage the back leg. Bring a little, weight, a little bit more forward. Go to the right a little bit. Try to get your head down beside your foot. Humble warrior. Pull your arms over the head. If this is too much, lower the knee down. And then just see if you can get your head to come down. So lots of different options. Do what is appropriate to you. Go to the place where you find steadiness, but you're still challenging yourself so that your mind sometimes has to work a little bit just to manage the discomfort. Whether it's the body or the emotions or the mind. Now release, bring the hands back down, lower the back knee down. Sink down to the seat. Stay low here. Look forward, bring your right hand to your thigh as well. Push your body back away from the leg, the front leg. Keep the body coming further back of the hips, telescope your chest up. And if you like, bring your arms up. You can take hold of your opposite elbows and just allow your head to just rest in your arm, feel like you're falling back away from the leg. If you can, however, extend your arms almost close to the head. Walk the shoulders back and forth. I get the arms behind the ears, Kapiyasana. Now, if you look a little bit more straight, that's okay. Just again, go to a place where you can find that the pose feels like you're doing your best, your best, your best offering possible. Don't go to a place of pain or anxiety as it's not what you want to transmit. Let's offer up the best, the best, and lover, positive effects. And then coming back up, press into the front knee, push your way up. Left foot moves in closer, right foot pressing the toes under. Right arm extends up, take the hand to the outside of the knee, left hand to the seat, push into the seat, pull down at the same time. Inhale, lift through the chest, push the lower back up and in. Turn to your left, push the knee towards the right. If you want, lean back and take hold of the uh, press your left hand to the outside of the heel. 
stay upright. Inhale, push the lower back up and in. Turn more over to your left. And keep pushing your knee into your foot, or your hand into your foot and your hand into your knee and vice versa. Now if this is too easy, come forward again. I'll do it this way. Right arm up and then bring the arm down. The arm, arm is sitting on the outside of the knee. Left hand pushes down to the right. Make sure that you're pushing the left hand down to the right so that the body lifts up, the belly comes higher than the thigh. Center the chest at the thumbs. And then keep pushing against the outside of the knee. Take the left shoulder all the way back. Turn your chest and face up. Pull left hip back, head forward. So you might be able to take the bind here. Well, go ahead. Make sure that elbows in the space, just close, just uh, underneath the knee. Pull your seat back. Use your left hand to guide the hand through underneath. Great space here. So the hand comes against the belly. Left arm goes over the back. And then maybe join your rocket fingers or hold the left wrist. And if you can, take your right knee up off the ground. Inhale, extend through the crown. Pull left hip back. Exhale, roll a little bit deeper into the pose. Try to get your chest and face to look straight up. Shoulders at the same height from the floor. Then from here, break the pose. Lower the knee down, release. Lizard. So just slide your right foot back a little bit more. Fall to the right. Get the right form down. Roll back to your left, you can get left form down. If it's too much, you stay on your hands. Keep toes in the chest forward. Make sure your knee doesn't fall away from your shoulder. Make sure you move your foot out so that the knee is on the same line as the heel. And keep toes in the chest forward. The more you do, the more you lengthen, the more the body comes down. Uh, trying to feel a lot of heaviness in your hips and your pelvis so that the belly follows eventually the chest. If your chest is still on, you can do the, uh, the bind. The left arm goes over your foot, underneath your knee from the outside, over your back. You just hold the right wrist with your left hand. Your shoulder is right beside the foot, maybe a little bit on the foot. Break the pose, come back onto your hands. From here, bring the seat back, toes up, bow to the leg. Just allow your chest to come onto your thigh. All the attention at the base of the spine. See so if you can get your forearms down towards the ground so you might be able to get your forearms right down. Now from here, bend the toes under, hinge the seat forward again, coming into lunge, and see if you can slide the foot forward. Making your way into Hanumanasa. Come on to your fingertips if you like. Bring them right beside your hips if you can. Try to get your shoulders over your hips. You don't want to be leaning forward too much. Stay upright. And then pulse in a mindful way. Try to send your seat down towards the ground. Eventually, if you're right down, or you can hold it. You can place a block underneath your thigh if you like. And you bring your arms up if you can. Okay, so. In this pose, you're saying anything is possible. The body, the characteristics of Hanuman, the courage, the devotion, and the faith, the utmost faith. That you can do anything. Come back. Come into Vasti Stasana here. So a few entrances are possible here. Place your right hand down a little bit from the shoulder. Take hold of the big toes. This is for advanced practitioners. Pull, uh, pull the left, right hip up, drag the foot back. Spin on your right foot and take it right up. Okay, if you have flexibility and strength, you can do that. If that's not looking possible, from here you just scooch your right knee in, underneath the hip, left foot comes back. You can even stay like this. Feel stronger, push into the right hand, bring the right foot up. You can bring the left foot in front of it if you like. Press your hips forward. And you can do different shapes from here. You can raise the leg up if you like. 
do whatever you like. Slide your left toes back, spin on the hand, come into wild thing. Let's come back. Carefully keep your hip up, keep your right arm extended, back into downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. So from here, your left foot steps forward between your hands. Turn towards the long edge of the mat. Come upright again. And then go to your right. Turn or turn your spin yourself around 180 degrees if you need to. Bend into the front knee, go low. Be steady like the warrior. Steady in their duty. Never hesitating. Always strong and always devoted. Bring your hands behind the back. Pull the hands down, lift the chest, bring the head back. And from here, come forward. So really lean forward, push the seat back a little bit, engage your left leg, your, your, le your legs especially, at the thighs, and see if you can keep your head down to the ground on the inside of the right of the leg foot. You have to go a little bit to the left, and if it's too much, you lower down on your knee. Pull your arms over the head. Express humility in this pose. It's called humble warrior. A warrior is always working for the people they protect, always like a servant. Stay in that mindset. So you can keep on releasing, not being affected by the expectations. And release from here. We're going to come up and sink your seat forward. Good. Bring your seat close to the front heel and then come forward with your left hand. Push your hands into the knee. Lean away from the leg. Pull the body back. Make sure you're not crunching lower back. Pull the body by the hips. Curl the tail under. If you want to come into the full pose, Bring your arms up over the head, or take all the opposite elbows and just allow your head to fall back in your arms. Push your chest up. Just think of getting length. A nice, smooth, uniform curve. No kinks, no kinks in the lower, anywhere along this curve in your spine, either at the bottom or at the base of the head. your hands into your knee and then come upright. Move the right foot in a little bit so the toes are underneath, uh, the heels underneath the knee, toes are bent under on the left foot. Left arm goes up, hands to the outside of the knee, other hand on the seat, push the seat in and push down at the same time. At the same time keep rising up out of the hips. If you like again, lean back, right hand comes to the heel. Stay upright, stay strong and proud. Shoulders turn towards the right. The, the, the body turns to the right. This is too easy. Parivita Pashvakanasana. Left arm comes up. Dive down, the arm sitting on the outside of the leg. Right hand to left, or even a fist. Push that hand down into the left hand, the receiving hand, to try to get your hand centered in front of the chest. And then roll the right shoulder all the way back. So the right shoulder is at the same height eventually as the other one. If you want to take a bind, go ahead. So always try to go to the edge of the potential, your potential. Try your best. You will have to find the right balance between the strength, the drive, and the effort with softness and surrender. You need both aspects to keep it a balanced practice. Sometimes you need more of one than the other. Just can't fit, be receptive to it. Break the pose now. Bring the back knee down. Look forward. Hands the inside of the left, right foot. Walk the right foot out a little bit more. And see if you can fall to your left. Get the left front hip to anchor down, left forearm if possible. And then roll to the right. So you want to imagine you have a big weight sitting right, resting right on top of your seat. 
to feel heavy through that area of the body so the rest of the body will melt down eventually. And she maybe you keep tugging with your arms towards you, the floor towards you, the chest will maybe come down further. Keep your gaze forward and look like a lizard sunning itself on a warm earth. Then if you like, you pass the right arm. If you're flat down on your belly, your arm goes over your foot to the outside of the right leg, underneath the knee, and over your back. Maybe you take hold of your left wrist. This is if you're flat down on the ground. Now break the pose, come back onto your hands. Take the seats back, lift the toes up on the, off the ground, melt the body on the front leg. Chest on the leg. Imagine you're trying to get your chest beyond your knee. All the attention at the base of the spine. Feel the blood rushing there through your attention, attracting it there. Now, if this is already giving you enough of an edge, you can stay here. Otherwise, lift your chest, hinge your seat forward, bend the toes under on the left foot, and start to slide your right foot forward. And when you at the, the height that uh, the, as far forward as you can, try to get your chest to come back so your shoulders are over the hips. And here you have the option if you can to bring your arms up over the head, cross the wrists if you like. Make this a divine expression of devotion and faith. Receptiveness, receptiveness to all experiences, facing the challenges head on. Break the pose, bring the hands down. From here, you have the option again of trying that entrance into Vasisthasana if you're advanced and have the flexibility, left hand from the left shoulder, and then press firmly into your base of your left toes, drag your right foot back, keep your hip lifted, and swing the leg up. The left toes are turned at 45 degrees, make sure the inside of the foot is grounded to make it a little bit easier. If it's not doable to come up this way, of course, you just bring the left knee underneath the left um, hip, come from this position, modified side plank, and if you can, push into your left hand, raise the left knee up off the ground. Try to get your hips to come away from the ground. Feel so you're being blown from behind like a kite. Again, you can do other options if you like. If you know them, raise the right leg up. Foot alongside the knee, spin on your left hand, come into wild thing, or you can even do the pose that I did coming from Vasisthasana, that version, just come up from here. Make your way back into downward facing dog, spin on your hand, keep your hip high. Breathe in, breathe out. Walk your right foot between your hands. Spin towards the long edge of the mat. Good. We're going to do it this way. You can see a little bit clearer. Um, Prasarita Palutanasana. You can take your hands to the outside of your, th of your legs, on the, the lower legs. Inhale. Step the head forward. Exhale. Pull yourself in. If you can, you can slide your hands down. Step on your fingers with the edges of the feet. And try to pull your head right between your feet. See if you can get eventually the head further through so that the chest ends up behind your legs, the back of the head in line through heels. Lift the shoulders up away from the ground, keep the neck long. Good. From here, come back up halfway. So you can bring your hands below your shoulders here. And from here, you can see if you bring your elbows down. From here, you can stay here. Or press into your hands, lift up through the hips. Requires a little bit of core strength. And see if you can bring your legs up into your forearm balance. 
again, this is an option. If it's too much, you come into tripod, bring your head down between your elbows. If you're up, make your way down, hinge at the hips. As the feet come close to the ground, you have to engage your legs more, your core, so that your feet land softly, exactly where they started, beside your head. And from here, lift your chest, bring your arms up, and come all the way up. Easy to cross them right from here. Toes pointing out, heels in. Take your hands to seat, bend your knees a little bit, and then pull your seat down and under. So you might need to walk your feet in a little bit more to make it more uh, uh, comfortable. And you just push your hips all the way forward. Pull your hands down on your seat, pull the seat down, and bring your head back. If you feel comfortable, you can slide your hands down below the knees, just below the knees. You have good control there, so you can spin your thighs outwards and your, um, your shins inwards at the same time. You don't just spiral. If you're more flexible, you can walk your hands further down. Maybe you can, some of you might be able to step right on your hands with the heels. Now, so you can push your hips forward a little bit, roll the thighs outwards. Try to get your hips to lift a little bit so your legs straighten. According to your condition, as always. To come back up, walk your hands back up the legs, one at a time. Coming one hand over the other, and then push into the seat, pull down, and come up. Arms out to the side. Jump your feet together, arms by sides, by like you're standing at attention, tall like a mountain. From the base of the spine. Imagine the base of the mountain, inhale all the way up to the crown, imagine that as a summit. Exhale back down to the base, the spine, the base of the mountain. Be solid and unshakable through and through in your devotion to the practice. And then we're going to come down onto our knees. Okay, so now is a chance to do headstand. Possibly again if you just did it in the last sequence. If you can't get into headstand easily, please go ahead. Right now, go ahead into it. And once you're there, focus your attention on the space between your eyebrows. Find stillness. It mind through your stillness in the body. If you want other modifications, you can do a few of these. Perhaps to build some strength, you can bring your elbows underneath your shoulders. Make sure you can hold the elbows easily, then bring your hands forward. Hands pressed together, interlace your fingers, and then lift the seat up. Dolphin pose. Push your seat back. You might need to walk your feet back a little bit more. So when you come forward, flat, your chin is over your hands. And do this a few times. Pull back and come forward. Okay, so you can do this. If you're not wanting to do a headstand, if it's uh, too much for your head or neck, if you feel comfortable, however, with your head on the ground, open up your palms and place your head between your palms, so your hands like a helmet. Walk your feet towards your elbows. And you can either stay here and just pulse up the heels one at, um, both at a time, bring your, hips, uh, your heels back up and down. And as you lift your hips, your shoulders come over your, your hips come over your shoulders a little bit more. If you're comfortable, bring one leg back, hang the foot very close to your seat behind you. Feel as though the foot were very heavy. And then do it off one foot. Keep pressing your forearms. Flex your toes on the back foot, the foot that's behind you, to keep your core engaged. And then from here, if you like, hold your breath, press, squeeze your head with your hands, your elbows into the ground, your forearms, and then pull your toes away from the ground. And you're up. Eventually you can move. Keep pushing with your foot behind you. Keep on having it dangling close to the ground so that you stay in balance. And if you go over, you just, it's not so, um, it, it's, it's pretty easy to roll out because you're already close to the ground. You can stay here with your legs hovering about the height of the hips.
with my shoots. So you practice either doing it one hand, left hand beside your hand, left hand back, right foot in front. Come on, just the index finger of your right hand. Yes, you can take your hand up off the ground. You have to push back to the back foot. Your hips have to be a little bit further back. Okay, keep your feet flexed. Lean towards your left arm. Just try, just take your finger off a bit at a time. Eventually you'll be able to stay. And then come down, child's pose, breathe in. Breathe out. Up. Okay, so now, shoulder stand onto the front of the mat. So from here, easiest way is to just roll back. So please come up, push into your arms, and send your feet over your head. And then walk your arms closer together. You can join your hands behind your back if you can. And try to get your seat directly over your shoulders. Now you can stay here if it's too much to bring your legs up. Keep your knees close to the ground. Or lower your seats a little bit. Bring your hands onto the back and just take your legs wherever you feel comfortable. You might stay in a tuck a little bit. If you feel comfortable, however, you rise up tall. Your hands come to about the mid-back. You push your feet up towards the sky. Shoulders and toes in the same line. Now from here, if you're wearing the top of your shoulders, you can even take your hands up onto your thighs. If you don't notice, do you notice? Make your mind one pointed. Take your hands to your thighs and your lotus as well. Just ensure, okay, you notice that your knees are higher than your hips. You have to push your hips forward a little bit. This chest should look like a wall. If it's too much, any of these, you can just keep your feet up. You can even go right against the wall. Your legs up a wall and you're sitting on your hands. That's an option too. Still an inversion. You still get all the same benefits as an inversion. Stay up, bring your attention to the space between your eyebrows. Keep trying to merge with God in all the forms as God is equally present in all the forms. Imagine that divinity sits at the space between your eyebrows and in the heart. Always connecting mind and heart together and soul. All action spells and words coming from a place of love and compassion. Now from here, you can come into plow pose, bring your feet behind your head. If you have a lotus, you bring your lotus right against your chest. And if you're in plow pose, you also have the option of just bringing your thighs down against your body and your knees on either side ahead. Just try to get yourself to remove yourself from all distractions coming in from the sense organs, the ears and the eyes in this case. meditative mindset. Now from here I should have instructed that. If you're in plow, if you like, bring your hands to your back. Come down one foot at a time into bridge pose. Landing your feet very softly. If that is not possible, you just roll your legs down. And then from here, fish pose. Slide to the left a little bit, lift your left side of the seat up, scoot your right hand underneath underneath the seat, palm down, 
and do the same with the other side. Left palm down, thumbs and index fingers touching. Now keep your legs extended forward, push your chest up, the top head comes to the ground. Chest is high. Those who had a lotus can stay in the lotus, by the way, and do the lotus fish, if you know that variation. Now breathe very fast on those at the sniffing dog. Keep your legs charged. And from here, don't move your head. Just move your feet in, go as close to the seat in front of the seat, and take your hands out from underneath. Now from here, take half breaths in, lift your seat up off the ground, place your fingertips on the other side of the head, fingers facing away, and then slide your head back a little bit further back behind your hands. Turn your hands now the other way, so the fingers are facing towards the toes, slightly apart, and turned outwards. Now from here, take a half breath in, if you feel comfortable, lift your head up off the ground. Words of Ganyasana. Okay, you can come off your heels. And just stretch, do anything you like here. If you know variations, go ahead. If this is too much, you can either keep your head on the ground or come into bridge pose. That's with your shoulders and your uh, head back of the head on the ground. So you just lift your seat, push your chest towards your chin, and you can just join your hands underneath your seat or bring your hands to your hips as you need for support. Stay, if you can, longer in the pose to practice fortitude. Now, if you like, you can raise the left leg up, knee towards the chest, bring the left leg up. You can even do this from the Urdhva Dhanirasana. Okay, so you can take your leg out to the side if you like. Support your hips if you need to. Come back. Lower the foot down, reverse the whole process. Do it from the other side. If you're doing four Urdhva Dhanurasana, go ahead. Raise the right leg up, straight up. Look up to your toes, legs straight. Push your chest forward in front of your arms. Toes of the left foot pointing out a little bit. If you want to try to take your leg out to the side, just make sure you're just giving the weight evenly between your hands so you don't fall like towards your right. To be very strong for the right hand. Bring the leg back up. Bend your knee. Bring foot back down. Bring your head back down. And relax on your back. Breathe in. Breathe out. Remove all fatigue. <sighs> Take a deep breath in again. Imagine beams of light coming into the body, bringing energy with it. Exhale, allow the energy to flood the body, feel recharged, feel rejuvenated. All right, so now raise your arms up over the head, come up to seated position. Sutolasana. Your feet are quite uh, your base is quite long here. Push your feet forward. It's about a foot and a half between your root and your heels. Lean, um, bring your, interlace your fingers, press your index fingers together to form a point. Reach forward and slip your hands underneath the outside of the feet. Press your, um, cup your the palms around the toes. If you can, allow the knees to fall out to the side. Elbows on the same line. So from above, it looks like a six-pointed star. From here, you can see if you can bring your face onto your feet. If it doesn't come down, don't worry about it. If you have a block, you can always place a block in between your feet and rest your forehead on the top of the block. I'll be touching again with the space between the eyebrows. Shift your attention to the space, the base of the spine. Imagine that all the blood is rushing there, that pulsation, you might feel it eventually. Imagine that as the dormant energy that's lying there, the Shakti energy that's trying to make its way up. It makes its way up when the gates open, 
the gates open when you're in full devotion to God and to the ethical precepts that you may need strictest observance of. Inhale, head and chest lift. From here, take hold of the heels from the inside and move your feet out a little bit more. Slide your elbows underneath and take hold of the edge of the feet and bring your head down. So this is a modification for Kurmasana. If you can, however, if you have the flexibility, you bring your knees, don't, don't bring your feet too far out, just a little bit more hip width. So you can bring your hands behind, facing backwards, and then when your legs come forward, just sliding forward, your, your legs are close to the shoulders, not, uh, not on the elbows. It might be a little bit more, uh, might be a little bit painful if you have your, arm, your legs on your elbows. You try to move your chest forward. Again, your attention to the base of the spine. If your elbows are free, so as you can, join your hands over your back. Lengthen your breath cycle. Breathe from the heart up to the space to the your breath and back down to the heart on the exhale. Here, bring your feet a little bit closer and see if you can get, bring your left leg up, push your shoulder against the um, back of the shoulder against the back of the knee, put your hand down right in front of the hip and then do the other side, same way. Push your foot back, your knees are behind the shoulders, push at your hands. Some of you might be able to, if you take a hot breath in, lean forward, really push hard into the ground. You might be able to get your seat up and into Titi Basana right from here. If that's not, can't get up off the ground easily, you come off into a squat first. Your seat is about the height of the knees and you bring your shoulders in behind your, uh, in, in, um, <laughs> you bring your arms in just uh, against the backs of the knees. Bring your hands down, lower your seat. From here, walk your toes out, you lift it up. Sometimes it's easier actually to move your feet together, press the toes and one foot into the other, arm squeezing pose. If you squeeze your arms, you might get your feet up off the ground. Good, and then from here, it's a little bit easier to lean forward, unhook the feet, keep your hips the height of the shoulders, and then bring your toes forward. as you can, you can press into your hands, back into Chaturanga, lower down onto the belly, otherwise bring your feet down and come onto your belly, forehead down, breathe in, breathe out, coming into Cobra now, you can stay in Sphinx, if you want to stay in Sphinx, you might want to walk forward a little bit, crawl forward and bring Take hold the edges of the mat, pull them forward, lift the chest, sink down through the forearms. Be very heavy in the hips and the forearms, the shoulders down as well. Be solid like that statue that's that the test of time all these thousands of years. Eventually lift your elbows up off the mat to allow the head to go back, curve the spine. And then bit by bit, you can walk your hands away from the mat, coming closer to the body. Scooch in one hand at a time. Pause, come up higher. Keep opening your chest. Make sure that you keep on just trying to pull your body up. Imagine you're trying to create space in your lower back. You don't crunch your lower back. More flexible, you can come onto your fingertips. Tuck your chin in. Move your fingers in close to your hips as possible. Push into the fingertips and rise up. Bring the head all the way back. Open up the throat. And separate your feet. And bring your toes up. Maybe your toes will find the head. Heels will be squeezing socks behind your knees.
Make your way down slowly. Relax, forehead on the hands, breathe in. Breathe out. Bend your knees, bring your feet up towards the seat. If you can, take hold of your ankles. If you have a strap, if you can't get your feet to, you can use a strap. So you wrap your strap around feet and you hold the edges of the strap and you come up like that. If it's too much to stay on your front, you can just, if, but you can take hold of your feet, you can just roll on to one side and push your feet down into your hands away from your shoulders to get lots of length. So lots of different options here. And let's come up any which way. Can pull on the legs a little bit. You can rock a little bit as you like. Look up, try to see your toes. Make sure you continue to breathe, don't hold the breath. Pull heels in towards the seat and lower down. Relax, breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, so from here, hands underneath the shoulders, press up into the table, and then come up. So lots of different options here. So we're going to start with rabbit pose, bend the toes under, push into the toes, bring hands to the seat, lean back, bring the right hand to the right heel, Left hand, left heel, fingers facing towards the toes, and then bring heels together, lock the baby fingers together. And then from here, push your hips forward all the way as we're going to fall on your thighs and allow the head to go back. The shoulder blades come against one another, your buttocks are engaged. Now if you want to go further, lean back a little bit. Shoulders come back a little bit further back and then flatten out the toes of one foot, flatten out the toes of the other foot, camel. Slide your hands further, just pressing against the soles of the feet. This is option, remember, so you can just stay in the pose that we're just in, rabbit pose, your heels up and your toes bent under. Now if you're okay here still in camel, you want to go further, those who are very flexible can come right down. So lean back a little bit, engage your core, and bring your hands to the backs of the knees, hold on to the thighs, and see if you can lower down. Bend your head back and see if you can get the top of the head to the ground. From here, if you want, you can move your hands beside your head and lift up, or take hold the edges of the mat. There's lots of different options here. Kapotasana is also a possibility, if you know that one, go ahead. You do Kapotasana, you move your hands again, um, so that you can place your head down on the ground, try to get your elbows down, but you can take your toes, it'll be a little bit longer to start, but eventually you can move your, very flexible, you can move your hands onto your ankle, onto your heels and bring your face right between your feet. Do according to your condition and your comfort level. Remember, know your limitations. Go to a place of offering where you can offer the best, the best, wherever that is. Break the pose. You can either come in child's pose, depending where you were, or on your back, depending on what pose you did. Rest. Breathe in, breathe out, let go of all fatigue. Imagine you're fainting or melting into the ground. Okay, so wherever you are, come back to seated. A few different poses here. For twists, lean to the right, fold the left leg back if you can. If it's too much for your knee, Keep it in front. Your other foot will either come against the knee, again, depending on flexibility, if you can. You're bringing me up towards the shoulder, 
we're going to foot across the body into Aigendi Lotus. If you had your leg bent, it would look like this. If you're not sitting on your foot beside your seat, your left side of your hip. Okay, if you can do this pose like this, then you would take the bind if you like. Lean to the right, bring the right arm over uh, behind your back. You can use a hand to assist to find the foot to the hand to the foot. Sit upright, left fist against your side of the right knee, or step on the hand with the back of the knee. Uh, step on the back hand of the knee. Inhale, lift through the chest. Go to the right. Make sure the left side seat is not popping up. Press it down. So if you're doing a modification, it may look like this. If you can't take the foot, don't worry about it. Just grab your shirt if you like. And then twist or bring your hand to your thigh. Push down into your left thigh. always somewhere you can go. So work at your level. With practice, things will unfold. Keep your back upright. Break the pose. Go to the other side. Lean to your left. Fold the right leg back. If you're doing the Vata Vajrasana, the full one, your left knee comes in towards your shoulder. You bring your foot across and rest the foot in the, just in the hip crease of the right leg. Turn to the left. Roll the head, left shoulder forward, bring your arm around. If you need to, you use your right hand to assist your left hand forward. Just place it on the foot and then you bring your right side of the seat down. So anchor down to both sides of the seat. Right hand to the outside of the knee or on your hand. Take your modifications just as you did on the other side if you need to. Lift up to the chest. Exhale, turn to your left. Feel the twist starting right low in the body at the base of the hips. Imagine you can see the spine spiraling around itself. Of the left, the right hand down if it was if you're taking this variation. Now return. Gently make your way onto your back for Shavasana. Go untangle your legs and just make your way down softly. Try to move in a way that doesn't bring yourself, bring your mind out of that state of calmness. And we cultivate even more calmness through Shavasana. Now allow the whole body to relax, surrender all effort. And here you're being flooded from every direction by the best of the best in the universe, everything that you need to feel fulfilled, complete, and grounded. And send all of that right again to the physical right side of the heart and center of the chest, which is a spiritual heart, the location of the spiritual heart. Make it a divine offering to all beings, all that you took in. Where God is a common thread that ties us all together is equally present in all forms and all beings. That's all you have to do is just to keep your attention at the heart. And just think of, imagine God sitting there. Now just a few relaxation, visualization techniques. Just follow my instructions. From the left toes, inhale all the way up to the left leg, right up to the spine, right up to the crown. 
Exhale as you make your way back down the same path, down the spine and down the left leg to the toes. Just feel as everything was melting down into the ground. Left side of the back, heavy. Left leg, heavy. The foot falling out to the side. From the right toes, inhale all the way up through the right leg, up the spine and up to the crown. Exhale all the way back down the spine, feel the whole right side of the back sinking down, the right hip, leg, lower leg, foot falling away to the right, right to the toes, everything limp and dead leg. From the left fingertips, inhale up through the left arm, all the way up through the shoulder, through the and through the head into the crown. Exhale back down the same way, down the head, feel the shoulders relax, the collarbone, the left arm going dead. All the way, even the fingertips. Loose, flimsy. From the right hand now, the right fingertips. Inhale up through the right hand, through the arm, through the shoulder, all the way to the top of the head. Exhale all the way back down the same way. Feel the whole right side of the shoulder, the arm, right to the hand, relaxing, becoming heavy as so though all the strength removed and all you feel is a weight of the arm, heavy as can be. From the crown, inhale down. All the way down the spine, through the left leg, right through the toes. Exhale, back up the leg. As you come back up, any residual tension that remains, release it. All the way back up to this, through the spine into the crown. From the crown, inhale down the spine again, and down the right leg this time. All the way to the foot and to the toes. Exhale back the same way again, just, just laying any tension that remains anywhere along that path to dissipate. Just leave the body, just drop it out of the ground, into the ground below. From the solar plexus, inhale from the solar plexus up to the crown. Exhale back down to solar plexus. Keep that channel free. Imagine always that, that an internal source that's producing your power is going up that spine to the crown for avail availability to all beings to tap into. Now from the base of the spine, inhale all the way up to the crown. Exhale back down to the base of the spine. Feel completely heavy in the torso, everything dead like limp. Now the body fully relaxed. In short, the body is still relaxed. Is completely relaxed. Scan the body. Once the body is quiet, the mind has more of a chance to quiet down as well. Now, make an intention of always trying to see God in all beings. This is how you cultivate compassion. We start to the practice through the imitation of forms. Imitation is like a very high form of reverence and try to keep that sense of reverence towards all beings as you go into your daily life, into the real world. So now repeat yourself the following sentence three times. I see the divine essence in all beings everywhere. Keep that with you as you go into your daily life now. Prepare to come back from Shavasana. Prepare to be once again fully established in your 
duty towards all beings, treating all beings with kindness, compassion, not just your friends, all. Let's close the practice with Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Send out the peace to all beings. Send it within as well. Remain peaceful at heart. Next week, actually, next Saturday, I am uh, teaching at a festival, so I won't be able to teach on Saturday, so it will be on Sunday, next Sunday, 8.30. Namaste. See you then.